on this. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. oh, hey! Happy Festool Friday, everybody! You caught me messing around. Hey, it's Festool Live. It's noon. The gang's in the house, and we're ready for you. Woo! Did we do a lot of prep yesterday to get ready for this episode, and I'm stoked beyond belief. I get to show you how to make a domino drawer box with through tenons, and we're going to Really take our time today because we're going to build this out for you. We get tons, like I said, of stuff prepared. But let's call, out the, let's call out the crew. Right here in the room, we have Big D on the board. We have C, <coughs> Chris, on what do you do? The camera. Over here, we have Min Min. She's on the whiteboard. Online, we have Brent and Travis, who I call Trappist. And I'm going to call somebody out. Oh, not somebody. I'm going to call some people out here at Festool. I call them our unsung heroes. We call them service because we have one heck of a service after the sale. That's right. Okay? With our three-year no ifs, ands, or buts, wear and tear warranty. Okay? But who handles all of that? You call in and you talk, ab you talk about a great crew. It's our customer service on the phone for you. Okay? But also our repair department. Okay, we got the Pats guys, we got the techs in there, we got the guys on there for application support, and we got all the wicked cool people fixing your tools for you if something should ever happen. So make sure you understand our warranty and our service, please, because we pay great attention to it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I had to call it out because I love all those guys and gals there. All right, and, and a lot of them are watching us right now. So there you go. And again, they give me 10 bucks for it. All right, so here we go. Today's build. Did I call everybody out I needed to online and everybody? Yeah, yep. we're good. Okay, I'm good with that, men. All right, so we're going to use the domino today. And I'm going to go through a lot with the domino. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to build a through 10 and drawer box. Okay, and I get a lot of other things prepped for this, but as I go through this, I'm going to show you some little nuances of using the DF500, but a lot of this will transfer to the DF700. Okay, like I've done before with dominoes during lives, is I've showed you the four laws or the four rules of thumb for the domino. Okay, and it's just little things we've learned in the training department over the years. So when you come into a training class, we can show you these things, all right? And it's kind of like one of those, oh, man, that's what I was doing incorrectly, <laughs> okay? Because guess what? I used to do that all of the time in the beginning. Okay, enough of me is yapping. Let's get building. All right, so let's talk about drawer boxes. This is a through 10 and drawer box, okay? Um, I'm going to be using material today, um, a melamine coat so you can really see it and we can... You can see all the measurements and oopsie and all the maxing. That's for, we got whoopsie count going. Okay, this is the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you can purchase this. This is drawer box material. This is just basically four inch, 100 millimeter. You can get it in, I think, six inch, eight inch, two inch increments here in the States and uh, North America. Um, I think this one is a, a 10 inch drawer box. And you're going to see the spacing. I'll discuss spacing for you. Okay, so you can see all the things on how to do this. I got a lot of stuff labeled. The nice thing about Festool Live is you can go back and review it on YouTube, but you can also see it on Instagram and also Facebook. And you can stop and start, so it's kind of like a little training program for you. And don't forget, you're going to hear this all the time from people on YouTube, including us. Hit that subscription button, please, and also hit the notification button bell so you don't miss one single episode. Okay, so I'm going to start the Vaxis, and I'm going to start labeling. And I want to I want to mention a few things as we were working with this drawer that I ran into early on, so you can see some of the hiccups that you can avoid. And I'm also going to talk about the bracket here, okay, and this little wing. See how that comes down? And I'm going to also show you the safety factor on all of this. Okay, so <coughs> this flap, in case you don't know, okay, from here to the center of the bit is 37 millimeters. That's the same distance from the front of the cabin to the center hole or the, for your hinge plates and for your adjustable hinges in 32 millimeter cabinetry. So it's 37 from here and 37 from here. But there's sometimes... <coughs> 
you need an additional uh, offset or a reference point, and that's 20 millimeters to center. So you'll understand my labeling now. I use both because when I'm building a drawer box, and Big D, I think you got this all set up here, okay? So people can see this. This is a drawer box, and I labeled it. I cut, oh wait, a back and a front and two sides. The two sides are 509 millimeter, okay? And the, two, the front and the back are 330 millimeter. Okay, so when I put the tenon in, Okay, because I'm going to be, and this is basic drawer box construction, everybody. Okay, I need to put something in here, whether it's a dovetail, a crown, uh, a crown staple, or anything, a woodworking choice. I've seen people use dowels. Okay, we're going to use dominoes today because guess what? You're pulling right here. Hang on, come on. I'll show you the. I'll show you where you need that shear strength. Look, right here, right. Okay, see, and we're going to put exposed tenons here. Here's one I built here with uh, blind tenons. That's, you use the four millimeter for that. Okay, but you know the shifting of material like spoons, utensils, whatever in there, you have to make sure that that'll hold up over time. So it's basically building 101. And if you think about it in this fact, okay, when we look at a cabinet, this is a box, a cabinet box. This is your top and bottom. You never build a cabinet like this because you put heavy plates in there, it's going to fall out, like for that upper. Hopefully, you're following me. It's basic cabinetry. Okay, so you got to know what your shear strength is. Now, if I use that 37 millimeter pin or flap here, my tenons would look like this because I did this one this morning. Look, I went 37 from here and 37 from here. Now, does that look okay? It does. But what I want it to look like is this. Say I put a, a side mount on here that's 20 millimeters from here on center and 37 from here. Follow? I don't want to use 20 because 20 would get into my captured bottom. Okay? So hopefully you're following all this. I made a bunch of samples to talk about that. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I want to do is I want to step through the machine and step through. I put a 5 millimeter bit on there because I'm going to use a 5 millimeter Sippo mahogany domino, okay? That is 5 millimeters thick and 30 millimeters long, okay? So that's what we're going to use, so you have that contrasting wood. I think it looks really nice when you do that contrasting wood on um, right here. Look, you'll see I use Sippos in here. It really pops it. Sippo mahogany is a genre of mahogany that's our outside domino, but I use it for contrasting wood and different builds I've done. Okay, so, <coughs> oh, hey, that's kind of cool. <laughs> All right, so when we mark, I'm going to show you the basics of marking your board, okay, to do a flush butt joint, because that's what we're doing. All right, so I'm going to take this piece like this, and you know that that's my side, so my front and back are going to go in between my sides. Now, Chris, can you come swing over here like this? This is as simple as it gets. This is how you mark your board. Look. See that? Because that line is where your plate of your domino is going to lie. Okay. Now, if you really think about this, my plate's going to lie here. So this is why I mark my boards like this. And make sure you swing in here. Or big D, you got this? I mark a V. V is for vertical. This cleans up with uh, degreaser really quick, your pencil marks. So <laughs> I mark my boards religiously so I, can make I make sure I don't forget. Because think about it. If I'm doing a drawer box, that means I might be doing five, six, ten drawer boxes. You can get turned around really quick. I also do this. I'm going to be plunging vertically. And I mark this 20. And I mark this 37. It's just a reminder. And you're going to see also... I've done that on the other boards, okay? And I'm just going to mark this 20 and 37. Once you get set up with this, this you can whale on this really quick. It's really easy. Now, on this one, I'm just going to write a big H. And look what my mark is. You'll get turned around if you don't mark your boards because, look, this is where my mark is. That's where my plate's going to lie. This is the outside of your front and back. I've seen people get offsets before, and it's very slight like this. 
and that's because they work the plate on the inside. So mark your boards and just make a look. 37, 20. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it around. 20 and 37. And I've done that on my other boards. So what I want to do is I am going to do all of these sides. I set my Vaxis up, my vacuum clamp, to speed up the operation today um, because I'm not... You, you know in woodworking, you should always clamp with two clamps. The Vaxis, I can just put that on there and I'm ready to go. But here's why you always mark your wood. Look where I put it. You always want to make sure you put that label side up because that's where I'm going to work it. Now, let's talk about the machine. <coughs> I put the support bracket on this morning. And in former videos, I showed you how to put it on the support bracket. When you put on the support bracket, everybody, make sure you put it on a surface that's dead flat and then tighten it up. <clears throat> I took it and I made sure that my plate was at 90, okay? My plunge depth for all my boards is going to be 15 millimeters in depth. You'll understand why in a little while. I do all of my tenons because I, I don't want any slop in there. I want it tight all the way through, okay, on both vertical and horizontal, so I put it in a tight position. And here's where we rely on the precision of this machine, okay? Because everything has to be tight. <coughs> All right, now, this is 12 millimeters thick. To go exactly in the center, I want to set it up for 6 millimeters. And I'm going to show you how to do this. This is your height release. I'm going to set my plate down. I'm not going to jam it down. If you jam it down, it bottoms out. Let me show you. You see this gauge block? You pull it all the way out. Okay, and it bottoms out at six millimeter. Now, if you press down too much, look at my flaps. See how that locks in a little bit? So don't kill it, just let it nestle down and make sure your flaps are free moving. I'm ready to rock and roll. I always verify in my head where I'm at to make sure I check everything. I got it set at six millimeter. You can read it, big D, I think you can get this right here. See that scale? See how it's reading six? That means I'm going exactly in the center. So. If you, from the plate to the center of the bit, it's six millimeters. And you can see that pretty easily. And, and let, me just, let me just take this out so you can see that. Okay. You see this little flat spot right here? Hopefully you guys can see it. The distance from the plate, that's the center of the bit. And you can actually see that. It's exactly six millimeters. So I always verify. It's just good for my eye because I, I, I don't have too much room for error here. Okay, so let's just let's get started. I get everything set. Now, I'm going to do the 37 first. I'm just going to come in and do the 37. I'm going to make it a little easy on myself and come and do 37 from this side. Okay, make it sure my plate is flat. And you're going to notice how I came in here. I'm plunging in line at a steady rate, I'm working off the table. Now, this is something I need to take a step back and really talk about safety. When you, this may take a little, a few seconds more, but when you move this flap down to that stop, which I'm gonna do now, you make sure the, that domino is completely off. Because when you're moving, your hand's too close to that bit. That bit is swinging right at this edge, okay? So you don't want to get your hand near that bit. That's spinning at 25,500 RPM. So make sure when you put those flaps down to get that 20 distance from here to the center that the machine is completely 100% off. Don't, don't, get in a, don't get in a hurry with this. So I'm going to do this one at 20. Okay, now, I want to do this one, but guess what? I got to wait for the machine to cycle down, which I did. Okay, now I can do that 20. And you're going to see, because I marked it, I can just grab this one and nail that 20 as well. Okay? So as I do it, and I swing back and forth, I'm almost done with my front and back. I'm going to take that down and knock the 37, making sure that that plate is dead flat. Okay, I'm going to swing it around, hit this 37. Boy, I'll tell you what, since we, this Vaxis came to the U.S., I'll tell you, it really made this operation 
speed up. And I just got to nail the second 20 right here. And I'm almost ready to go in the vertical. And I can teach you a few things with that. Okay. So the next thing we're going to go over is we're going to plunge vertical. And there's a little bit of technique about, plunge, about plunging. <laughs> Who is it, Minnie? <laughs> hey, Gary. Okay, so <laughs> if you heard that, that was Minnie saying, aw, okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to plunge vertically. That's why we have the support bracket on there. <clears throat> I'm going to flip this up, so I'm going to do the 37s first, and I want you to see this. And Chris, I want you to come back over here so you can see this. Look what my pressure is. It's right here on this top part of the height of the plate, okay? The height adjustment of the plate. That way there, I'm pushing, so I'm going to plunge perfectly at 90 degrees vertical. Now, to turn it on, here's another tip I learned. I used to turn it on like this, and sometimes it would plunge while I was turning it on. And then Greg Polini taught me this. He goes, take your fingers, put them right here, not all the way in, but just right here, and pinch it on. It makes it a lot easier. And your hand should never come underneath, because we're going to be plunging through the material. Whoopsie. And once again, I was using the 20. So I'm just going to come over here and grab another piece. I'm always good like that. Because guess what I did? I didn't have the flap all the way over there. So I'm just going to go like this. Bring it right in all the way. And I don't know why it went to the, to the wide setting. But I'm going to bring it over and make sure it's all tight. And I'm going to do my 37s first. I'm going to come in and grab that 37 again. Okay, you're going to see where the 37 and 37 end up. Okay, now I'm going to grab my 20s. So I'm going to grab that 20 vertically here. You see how I bring the 20 down. I'm just going to take it like this. Okay, I know that 20 is in there. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to take this one and bring it around. But remember, you could get in a hurry, and my hand is very close to that. Make sure it cycles down all the way. Bring it over here. Bring it right in. Make sure that that is right there, and make sure you have that 90-degree pressure, just like this. And make sure that that is registered properly. So we have that, we have that, and we got one more to do. So think about this. If you have this completely set up, you can knock out drawer boxes really quick. Now, I should have a 20 already set up, and I do. I got 15, and that 20 is ready to rock and roll here, just like this. So I'll knock that one on like this. Okay. I'm going to do the other 20 while I... Have it cycled off. Boom, boom. How are we doing, Minnie? Boy, we got a lot of people today, don't we? Holy moly. Is Robert Little watching? Hey, Robert, how are you? Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> All right, so there's my 20s. Now I'm going to turn it off because i got to get that 20 out of there. All right, and we're going to cut the bottom, or I have pre-cut bottoms, but I'll teach you how to do that. So I'm just going to take that now. Remember, plunge at that 90 with that pressure. I used the 37 there. I'm just going to flip it around. Bring that 37 in there. Take your time. Okay, so there we go. We've done our plunging, and we should be good to go. Now, if you're using raw material, yes, I would plunge from the outside in because that would get covered up. But this melamine coat, look how crisp, look how crisp that comes out. All right, so let's see if I've done my, my job correctly. I'm going to swing over here, and let's get some dominoes in there. And the way I assemble this, and this is something I, I learned over time, okay? Look how I do that. See how I put it basically half in, half out? This really helps when you're putting a gl applying glue to this. Just like this, okay, and I swing it around. I put it on the board so I can do this. And I'll do it on my sides like this so I can pound them in. Flush. All right, now it's always good to dry fit. 
And I do that every single time. Because <laughs> you can see where I made that first mistake the first time. And boy, I'll tell you what. I, I once heard somebody say this at a trade show. I don't know if I, I... Ooh, did that line up? Let's just check this out really quick. Let's see. That looks a little off. I'm going to try to do this one again because I don't think I get I got 37 complete over there but you won't see that mistake these guys will yeah I didn't have that all the way so you're gonna you're gonna run into a few of these things over time just you gotta you kind of that's why you always cut extra uh, drawer box sides so I'm just gonna slide this in we'll get it all set up this will be the, the back one, but I'll just get that set up like this. No worries. No worries. I'll take this. That was the one I had that I, I was having trouble with, and I don't know what happened, but that's okay. So when you set this, and I'm just going to talk about glue up really quick, because I just glued up about last year about 30 of these drawer boxes for my shop at home. And what I did is I took a little bit of glue. Yeah, you know what? You'll understand. I took a little bit of glue and I coated, I coated these sides just like this. I coated all the sides with glue just like this. And as I pounded them flush, you'll see. Let me do this. Let me grab a bottom. Now, whoo, the depth of this groove is standard. It's six millimeters in depth. And hopefully we can get a measurement with this. Can you? Is that coming through? Six millimeters of depth. Okay. Just remember, when you're measuring, you should have a Polini pocket rule. I'm just kidding. That's a call out for you, Greg. Okay. So I measured this at 509 millimeter. So I had to compensate for this six millimeter groove. So six and six, if you ask me, is what? <laughs> 12. So what I do is I undercut my plywood by 2 millimeter. So I always look at my length and add 10 millimeter when I'm doing drawer boxes. I cut this at 340. You'll see this is 330. I added 10 millimeter. I cut this at 340 by 519. 340, okay? And I always write wide, okay? And 519 long, okay? And I always write L, so I know. And in fact, probably on one of these, look, that's how I was cutting yesterday to set this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pound this. And let's see. Oh, let me get a dead blow hammer here so you can see this in the setup. So just let's pretend. I'm going to do a dry fit, but let's just pretend that this is all set up. And I'm just going to pound this. Look, I just pound them flush. That had, let's just pretend that had glue. And then I take this one. Okay, I'll put it together like this. <laughs> you know what's amazing? I'm putting this together, okay? And as I'm putting it together, I'm coming over here and I'm going. And it's, it's, it's funny because I've done this a few times that I, I kind of go, phew, it's coming together. <laughs> I shouldn't doubt. What did, Rick, what do I always say? Don't doubt the system. So I'm going to put this in like this. Yes, I've cut it. I'm going to put it in its groove. And you're going to see how that doesn't slide in there because this wasn't cut properly. Let's see if I have another one that's cut properly. Okay. You know what's really cool about this? Is I'm going to go over here to my Capex and I'm going to cut 519 if I've measured it correctly. Okay. Let me, let me measure this again. Is this 509? Okay. Oh, you know what I got to do? Are those the right positions? Let me check. Let me verify that. Why isn't that working? It should work, right? If that's 519, but I'm just going to cut it over again. Sorry, guys. I should have cut it a little. I should have dry fitted this a little bit. So I'm just going to come in here, and I'm going to take a little off, just like this. Oh, I know why. Never mind. OK, I'm going to come over to my Capex. I'm going to turn on that laser. And always remember, when you're using a Capex, make sure you lock it down. And I'm just going to take this. 
And here is why I use that repeatable stop. Okay, here's a little trick for you. Because now I know this is basically, and this is for the states, this is 13 inches wide. I can't cut all the way through, but I can do this. I can flip it over, bring it against that stop, and do the remaining cut. So there you go. So let's bring it back in. And that should be the cut right there. And there we go. And I'll just feed that in like this. It's still a little. I'm going to take a little bit more off. Sorry about that. My measurements are off a little, but that's okay. You know what I should have done? I should have measured this a little bit better. But that's the beauty of live. So I'll bring it in, bring it right over, slide it right in. There we go. Okay, nice and tight, everybody. Look, I measured that side correctly because I'm going to take this board and bring it right on in. And yes, it's coming right on in. I'll just tap it flush. Come over here and get this one, Chris. Let's get that one right over here. Just like this, whoopsie, get it in there just like this, and it just brings it nice and flush, so we got a nice drawer box, and there you go, everybody. Just zoom in here, Big D, and get that. you see how it all flushes out. Nice tight drawer box bottom. Sorry about the mismeasurement, everybody. Okay, so are there any questions so far on this? No. Oh, I forgot it is Friday the 13th. Go figure. Always measure twice. No, measure three times on Friday the 13th. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about a taller drawer box. And this is, this is some technical stuff you may run into with one of our accessories. Okay, so if we look at this, and this was my original drawer box. I glued it up yesterday. Look, I went from here. Chris, hopefully we can see this up top. Yep. You get the 20. Okay, see how it's 20 here and 37 here? But I wanted to put one in in the middle between these two. So the way I did it <coughs> is I measured, and, and you know how these are tight? So think about that. I have to use the accuracy of the machine to create these. All right, so it's the same process, vertical and horizontal, but how do I achieve that center one? Follow me on this. So I don't go by the overall. What I did is I measured between here. You know that's at 20. You know that's at 37. I measured in between, and it ended up that 75 millimeters in between. So what I did is I took the 75, and I measured, or I scribed the center line at 75 and measured to the center of that from the bottom. And I made a mark all the way around on the bottom, 110 millimeters. Now, someone may contradict me and say, well, why didn't you measure from the top? And you'll see right now. OK, let's go over and grab these. These are the cross stops. And if you understand the cross stops, they start at 100. <laughs> so I can't go down to 75. So when I set it up, I go from the bottom to achieve the 110. Follow? Hopefully you all follow that. All right, good. Now, remember I said earlier, I like using the 37 and the 20 because if I put a side mount right here, okay, that right there will add up. So when I put the side mount, it looks good, okay? It'll look even spacing. So, you know, some people may choose this to oversimplify it, and that may be good for your eye. But it, for me, it wasn't good for my eye. So that is why people choose sometimes the type of drawer uh, slides called undermounts. Okay, but if somebody's out there watching, which just looks like there's a ton of people watching today, um, is you have to make a notch here, don't you? Okay, now, there's a variety of ways of making notches for undermounts, all right? Uh, I've seen people use um, uh, table saws. I've seen, and I, I think it's kind of dangerous uh, with a stack on there, a dado stack. I've seen people use router tables. That could be dangerous as well. Um, I know some people that will rip, say this is the back of my cabinet, they will rip that piece off and then tack the bottom to the underside so it's completely exposed. 
But what I want to show you today is a technique that I used last year uh, at my house to do this notch right here for the undermounts. I did a few measurements. You know what? I'm just going to slide this over here because I got everything set up. Give me one second, everybody. Woo! Okay, I got it all set up over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to do another notch right here, <coughs> and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, I use the domino joiner. I have it out; it's ready to go. Um, I use a 10 millimeter bit because what I wanted to do is I was using these under mounts here. Okay, they, you know, you to do this you have a drilling jig you got to get right. These pieces are easy because those go up in there, but what you need and and bear with me, this box is not the right size for these undermounts. I had these left over from last year. But these are, the, these are the pieces that go in here, and you have to create this notch for this to settle in, this part right here. Okay? And you also have to drill for this piece right here. That's what part of this drilling jig is right here. Okay? You put this in the notch to drill so it captures right in here. That's one of your release mechanisms. So you have to have this notch, okay, or no back. So what I did is I made a few measurements, and I like to use gauge blocks, all right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this up. I made a gauge block because overall I need 45 millimeters. So what I did is I came in here like this, and I just scribed 45 millimeters, okay? But you must have two dominoes <laughs> to do this. <laughs> <laughs> they make the ultimate gauge blocks. And then look, see this one? This is 29 millimeter. Okay, I take it over here. And what I'm doing is hopefully we can see this. I'm creating a center line for me to eyeball with my domino joiner. Okay. I worked out the math for you because these are very popular. Um, this is a very popular brand. You probably already guessed what it is by the orange color. And, and the only thing I'm going to do, and this is a, I, I don't know exactly which ones these are. But they're the most popular ones. You get them at any cabinet supply house. Um, okay. So the domino I have set up, I utilize a 10 millimeter bit. I set my depth, okay, at 16 millimeters in the window. That's, it's, this here is the math I worked out for this particular brand where that notch will bring me right down and just barely cut the top of the, uh, the plywood bottom. Okay, <coughs> because if you do the math in your head, or as you're thinking about it, it's a 10 millimeter bit. So I did a little bit of experimenting with this, and the right settings are 16 in the window and a 10 millimeter. Now, the only thing I got to really do is set this up to cut it. Uh, let's see, I need a clamp and a dog to make it easy just like this, because I want to impede that forward momentum. If you have a, I'm going to turn this off really quick. OK. So let's hook this domino up. Cool. Yeah. Wow, I got a lot of calling out to do, don't I? Woo. We got a lot of people watching, Big D? It's our biggest day yet. Oh, now you're talking. Okay, now there's one more set or two more settings I got to talk about. The plunge depth is 12 millimeters. Okay, and because of that 45 overall here, and I'm lining up on the 29, I'm using that 10 millimeter bit. The calculation I came up with is that largest swing right there gives you an extra five millimeters on each side, Whew, 10 millimeters overall. So that's why I scribed. 29 millimeters. So let's see what I got here. I just want to see if that gets impeded. Nope. I'm going to turn that on. And hopefully you can see, I'm making sure I get right on that edge. My hands are nowhere near there, and I plunge. OK? See how I came through? OK, now, this is where you're going to have to pick up one of those fancy hand saws. Any hand saw will do. And I'm just going to take it like this. And that's why I have that 45 mark. So I can come right down like this. That breaks away. And then I would take a, a chisel just to chisel that out. And I got a perfect system already set up. That's one thing I didn't take out. Look, and I'll just come in here and pair that little bit out just like that. And that is the perfect notch. I didn't cut in. It's all the way down. And those will sit 
right down there. Absolutely perfect after I bore that hole. So that's just a quick or another way to do an undermount. Yes, I know these aren't the, the ones designed for this box because these are the shorties. But there you go. That's just another application for that Domino 500 you have. Cool? Wow, did I cover a lot today. No, <laughs> no I'm good. I'm co Man, this had a... Wow, we went today, didn't we? Oh. Now, the beauty of this is sometimes I go... I know I go a little too fast. Uh, but you know what's the beauty of YouTube? You can go back and watch it at your own pace. Okay, I... We, as a team, want to get as much into this series as we go. So you have a lot of great applications for the domino, the track saw coming up, all kinds of great stuff, okay? So, wow, man, here we go. This is my favorite part. Okay, Bryce, Chris's roommate. Hey, <laughs> Bryce, you're watching. Nice to see you. I'm going to meet you hopefully soon. We got Jersey, Channel Islands. We got Sunnyvale, California, Wasilla, Alaska, the UK. We got five people from the UK. Thanks for tuning in. We got Poland. We got Belgium for. We got Ukraine, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Montreal, Malta. How are you? Good to have you back. We got DE. Is that Deutschland or is that Delaware? I don't know. We got Helena, Alabama. I know who that is. I forgot your name, but I won't forget it because many will remember it. We have the French Alps. We have Calgary, Canada. We have France. Southern California times two. South Africa times two. Prosper, Texas. Pinehurst, North Carolina. Egypt. Woo! We got the Netherlands. We got Ecuador. We got Tennessee. We got Kitchen Alchemy. Chris, that's you. Elliot, Maine. Okay, cool. Victoria, B.C., Oswego. Oh, I just like the name of that. Oswego, Oregon. West Virginia. Ledyard, Connecticut. Long Island. Seattle. Upland, California. Raymond, Maine. Yeah. We have Greece. Regina, Saskatchewan. Italy. Chris Blair from Australia. Hawaii. It's 4 a.m. there, dude? Woo! Thanks for tuning in. We have Austria. Hartford. We have the Czech Republic. We have Albuquerque. We have West Medford. We have Caldwell, Idaho. We have Geelong, Australia. Is that right, Minnie? Geelong? Geelong? Geelong, Australia. Good day. We have Sweden. Seaback, Washington. Baltimore. We have London. We have Florida. We have Massachusetts. Wow, that is a big crowd today. Wow. Okay, so one other thing. It's good to make mistakes. <laughs> I make them every day as long as we learn from our mistakes. So take your time when you're doing drawer boxes. Take your time and think safety when you're using a Domino 500. I want to thank everybody who's on the Festool Live team. But more than anybody, I want to thank you for tuning in. We love you guys. Please keep tuning in. We got so much planned all the way up until Christmas. We're even planning January. Make sure you put comments on YouTube channel and Instagram of stuff you want us to do. By the way, we'll never run out of stuff because we keep making really good stuff. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, service. Thank you, customer service. Thank you, repair. And I think that's a wrap, everybody, right? Yep, that's it. Woo, baby. Have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in.